And why is this important? I think first and foremost, uh, because of the values we all share when it comes to human rights. Uh, let's face it, the Cuban government is oppressive, repressive. They do not share our values when it comes to uh, democracy and the ability to speak out, the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion. Cuba remains the only country in Latin America that represses all forms of political dissent. The government enforces uh, political conformity using harassment, invasive surveillance, threats of imprisonment, and travel restrictions. Uh, in 2011, the Cuban government, the Castro government, released the, some of the remaining political prisoners from the uh, a group of human rights defenders and journalists and other dissidents who were sentenced in 2003, the Black Spring. Um, and I met with one of these dissidents just a couple of months ago. Pedro Pablo Alvarez uh, was came to my office in Washington. I didn't know what the topic he wanted to discuss was uh, Gulf Coast Jewish Family Services here in the Tampa Bay area uh, arranged the appointment. I hope you all know that Gulf Coast Jewish Family Services has a very important uh, torture, survivors of torture center, the Florida Center for Survivors of Torture. They do wonderful work with people who have been through horrendous circumstances all across the globe. But they brought Pedro Paolo Alvarez, who was a very down-to-earth gentleman. He was a, li he's a librarian. He was a librarian in Cuba. Uh, he was someone that supported the right of people to organize and try to negotiate with the, with the government over their employment situation. Uh, he was a father, a husband. Uh, but he was also critical of the Castro government. And in that circumstance, that was kind of the trifecta that did him in. He believed in freedom of expression, people to be, have the ability to come to his home and share his library, um, the ability of unions and people to come together, workers to come together, and then he said, I should have the ability to speak out. Uh, they rounded him up with other distance in the Black Spring of 2003. He was sentenced. Uh, really for no good reason, without what we would expect to be a trial, uh, he was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Uh, fortunately, the Catholic Church and others uh, over time pressed the Castro government to address the fact that they had political prisoners in their jail. Uh, sometimes you don't know why or when the Castro government acts as it does, but with the help of the country of Spain uh, and a lot of pressure from others and hu international human rights, uh, they released Pedro Pablo Alvarez to Spain along with a number of other dissidents uh, in 2008. By that, after shortly thereafter, he went back to Miami to reunite with his wife. He now has uh, become an outspoken advocate for, uh, what do you think? He said, I, was, I didn't know. I said, well, you're from Miami. You're a dissident. Uh, it could have gone either way. Sometimes I hear people say, no, I am so angry at what happened in Cuba. We should not uh, interact with them at all, and we should continue this isolationist policy and do everything we can, everything that, just like we've been doing with the embargo and travel restrictions to punish the Cuban government and the Cuban people uh, as a byproduct. But I was surprised. I asked him, what should we be doing? He said, more engagement. He said, you are just getting started. And what the Cuban people need most of all is an interaction with those that share their values and can continue to press, whether it's through business interest, uh, tourism, or their family, uh, for the human rights that and the values that we all share.